just stomp you out Came with all my goons, we gon' thug it out Go hit bust and move, we gon' stomp you out Came with all my goons, we gon' thug it out Throw your hood up, go ahead and rap your city Throw your hood up, go ahead and rap your The next topic we're gonna discuss on Boxing Bros is an article that was written by Boxing News 24. And I would just like to highlight, uh, I never met the person who wrote this article, but let's just see what this article has to say. The article says, Crawford versus Brook. What can Terrence prove against Kel? Um, and in the article, it says, WBO 147-pound champion Terrence Bud Crawford is in a tough position with his next defense against Kel Brook on November 14th at a still-to-be-determined venue in the United States. They don't even know the venue. Dang. Um, Brooke, 34, has already uh, been beaten by Crawford's nemesis, Earl Spence, three years ago when the British fighter was at his career height. Three years later, Crawford is finally getting around to facing Brooke. <laughs> three years later, Crawford is finally getting around to facing Brooke, who only rarely fights nowadays. Brooke is unquestionably the first real fighter Crawford, uh, for Crawford since he moved up to 147 in 2018. Brooke is unquestionably the first real fighter for Crawford since he moved up to 147 in 2018. Sorry, I, I, I forgot I already read that sentence. All right. Um, that's why this is a matchup that could go wrong for Crawford if he's not a true welterweight. Brooke is big for 147 division, and Crawford will be facing the best opponent of his career. Brooke is big for 147 pound division and Crawford will be facing the best opponent of his career that Earl Spence beat three years ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Crawford won't receive credit for beating Kel. This means that Crawford will need not only to beat Brooke, which won't be easy, but he'll also need to do a better job than Spence did in his 11th round knockout in May 2017. But here's the kicker. Even if Crawford does TKO Kel more efficiently than Earl did three years ago, he won't receive credit from many boxing fans. Top rank has put Crawford in a situation where no matter what he does against Brooke, he's going to be skewed by the boxing public. If Crawford struggles, it will reinforce, if Crawford struggles to win, it'll reinforce his uh, critics' opinions of him, a product of soft matchmaking. If Crawford struggles to win, it'll reinforce his critics opinion of him being a product of soft matchmaking the very product of uh, uh, the, the kind of power and toughness that brooke brings to the table he could make it very hard for crawford who has never faced anyone like him at 147 crawford's opposition at walter weight has been pedestrian level fighters with limited talent crawford's opposition at walter weight has been pedestrian level fighters with limited talent. Did I write that? No, I didn't write that. Somebody else wrote that. How could he have that same opinion? You no, work for them. Let's <laughs> <laughs> I influenced that guy I never met. All right. Uh, Terrence opponent since moving to Terrence opponent it's since horrible. 147. Jeff Horn, Amir Khan, Jose Benavidez Jr., and uh, Cavalosquez. So uh, Cavalosquez is, is perhaps the best of the bunch Crawford has faced at Walter Waite, but he's a fighter who arguably deserved a loss in his previous fight against Ray Robertson. Um, Cavalosquez was a controversial 10-round draw, but most boxing fans had Robinson winning. What does Crawford prove against Brooke? Terrence will be entering the ring next month, said Chris Maddox at the zone. According to Bob Arum, Crawford will face Kell Brook on November 14th. Crawford, is, Crawford currently sits at 36-0 and, and hasn't fought since December of 2019. What can Crawford prove against Kell Brook? Bud Crawford can prove in a terrible year that, he's, that we're having, especially for boxing, that he can have a meaningful title defense against a former champion that has only been stopped by two fighters, Gennady Golovkin and Earl Spence, said Sergio Mora, remember, three years ago. Um, so if Crawford can beat a third, can, can so if Crawford can be the third elite name on that list to stop Brooke, he can go into 2020 and focus on the fight that he really wants, the mega fight against Manny Pacquiao or Earl Spence. It is not a terrible fight to me, said Maddox on Crawford versus Brooke fight. Brooke has rebounded from those back-to-back -back losses, and he's won three straight. Most recently, the destruction of Mark 
DeLuca. Brook is a good opponent for Crawford, but he just won't get credit. No matter what he does, we'll be able to see we will be able to see how Crawford stands up to a heavy uh, uh, against a welterweight with some ability, which we haven't seen yet. If Brooke is 90% of what he was five years ago, he has an excellent chance of unseating Crawford. If Brooke is 90% of what he was three to five years ago, he has an excellent chance of unseating Crawford. That's not a knock on Bud but it's more of a reality check that he has not looked great since moving up to 147. That's not a knock on Bud, but it's a reality check that he hasn't looked great since moving up to 147. Crawford struggled against Amir Khan before taking him out in what looked like a move of frustration with his low blow stoppages on the 6th in April 2018, Jeff Horn was too mediocre to show us whether Crawford was for the 147-pound division. Jose Benavidez Jr. was a fringe-level guy who clearly had no business challenging Crawford for a world title at 147. Benavidez's main thing was the same company promoted him as Crawford with him being signed to top rank. Apart from that, Benavidez was a poor challenger and that fight told us nothing about Crawford. Will Kelbrook be weight drained? So for the sake of it, I'm not going to read this whole article, but I just wanted to dive in to some of the things uh, in that article. It's a very long article, but it touches on some great stuff. So, Trill, you wanted to unleash. Um, what can Terrence Crawford prove by beating Kel Brook? And this is where the floor is yours. You can say whatever you got to say. Nothing. He absolutely gains nothing. And this is why the UK media is not picking up this fight. No broadcast is picking up the fight. Nobody should be watching this fight. Anything, if they wanted to get this on, they should have just called each other and got it on in the gym and sparred. Um, when I say that nobody want this fight is, <clears throat> listen, I like TC. I like Terrence Crawford. That was my guy. I was talking about Terrence Crawford when he was at 135. And I thought it was impressive when he went up to 140 and he beat um, Prescott. Then he went back down to 135, had another fight, and then moved back up to 140 to go in there and start his. You name me an opponent, right? Like, you can't like somebody, right, so much that you overlook things and you give them extra accomplishments. And that's what we, we do as fans, right? We start giving them accomplishments and and, and – giving them accolades for things that they haven't deserved. We give them credit for fighters that they haven't beaten. You know what I'm saying? Things that they haven't done. You know what I'm saying? That's what happens when you fall into the fanboy category. You know? Um, Terrence Crawford hasn't fought any of the top welterweights. We talk about all these other fighters and, oh, they're not this, they're not that. But these guys is fighting each other. They're getting the chance to tell who is who. He's not fighting none of those. Jeff Horn, Amir Khan. This is what we doing? My homie Benavidez with the bullets in his leg. This is what we doing? Kavalaskis. This is what we doing? He got dropped by Kavalaskis quiet as kept. I, I, that he did. He got dropped by him and everybody seen him. If you don't think he got dropped by him, then you just took your whole fanboyism to the next level. <laughs> what's, what's beyond that? You know what I'm saying? That means you're, <laughs> in, you're in complete denial. Then we can't even have a conversation. Because you're going to start telling me like, oh, you know, like I was once president of the United States. That's where, you, <laughs> that's where you're at with it. That's where you walk in the sub shop in the hood and those old delusional guys. <laughs> yeah, you know it was used to be me and Michael. I taught Michael the moonwalk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you become one of them. Well, you can't see reality. Word. Word. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I feel like I be talking to yeah. sometimes, bro. <laughs> he is, I like TC too. He from Nebraska, humble kid. You know what I'm saying? I like how he gets that. I love his mannerism. And he's a dog. In the ring, you put whoever you put in front of him, even though they're tomato, tuna cans, whatever, he's gonna be a dog in there. You know what I'm saying? I listen, 
<laughs> I love when he, I love when he fought um Hank Lundy. But who was Hank Lundy? <laughs> like, for real, like we're gonna go against. I love seeing TC because I like TC, so I like seeing him in the ring. <laughs> but who? I give him Victor Pascal, and I'm giving him um, and and I'm giving him uh, uh who? Uh, what's the other person? Uh, uh um. I'm not even giving. I was gonna give him Prescott because Prescott knocked out Amir Khan. Everybody knocked out Amir Khan. I didn't. I'm saying he went up to 140 to do it. But I'm gonna give his most impressive. They both was undefeated at that time, and before the undisputed belt was the Victor Bosco in um in Terrence Crawford. That was the most fight where you could say, hey, he was an undefeated guy, and he had two belts. TC had two belts, and they got it on for undisputed. But ever, ever since then. Who has he fought? Who has he fought? Everyone's like, ducking him. <laughs> everybody, who? Nobody's ducking him. If these guys is over here and they're fighting, these guys are bigger fighters over there across the street. They're bigger than the opponents that he fought. These Every opponent that he fought, every guy across the street would beat. I'm not a huge guy. Of the, I'm not a huge fan of the guy with the leprechaun suits. But he would beat everybody. Facts. Facts. That you have <laughs> on your resume. The guy with the ugly suits. You know who I'm talking to. He would beat everybody that you beat. Danny would beat everybody that you beat. The question is, would you be able to beat the guys that these guys have fought over there? Yo, well, in fact, in fact, the guy with the leprechaun suit already fought Kell Brook years before you did. And that was when he was special. Mm -hmm. The guy fought him when he was special and gave him a tough fight. Even, I, even though I don't like that style of fighting, he gave him a tough fight. Mm -hmm. You're fighting a guy who the guy over the cross the street beat down and batted and busted his eye. Not to mention he already had his other eye busted, like, uh, like my uh, fellow co-host uh, uh, Ned said. He's not special K. He's just OK. He's okay to fight an American. That's what that that's what fight needs to be happening. That's <laughs> right. American and Cal Brook. That's the competitive fight right there. That's where these guys are in at their, at their career. Cal, uh, where um, TC's trying to do is he's trying to get a name. If you're not gonna fight this man at 154 and give him the best chance so you can show to everybody who you are and challenge yourself. What are we doing here? It gets to the point where you got to stop challenging yourself and you want to say that you want to be a star. You got to say, I want to fight these other people because everybody that you fought has been God, but you've seen the people. I like TC too, but I'm not going to give him victories that he hasn't earned. I like, I like other fighters too, but I'm not going to say that they, they haven't earned it yet. Like people, you y'all y'all were right. You know what y'all would do, right? Because y'all don't really love the sport of boxing, right? Y'all love the fighters, certain fighters, and you fanboy for certain fighters. You end up turning other people off from that person mm -hmm. that really loves boxing. Yep. Because you're gonna fanboy for that person so much, right? And you're gonna give the, the false narrative to, to the person like me who loves boxing. I have to tell you the truth, and it makes it seem like I don't like that person. That's one hundred. Yo, true. You keep it at one hundred. That's true. <laughs> I like this person, but the truth is the truth. There's other people that I don't like, and I talk mess about them about their suits, but I can't overlook their accomplishments and what they have actually done in the ring. You're saying that this person is number one. And these persons are number four. And how are these number fives and fours and threes have a better resume than you? I don't get it. That's because the perception of people and what's real is two different things. Perception and what is real is two different things. The perception of somebody and what is real. You can think that somebody is all great and this, that, and third, but when you really go fact to check and check what it is, they haven't did it yet because you've been too busy fanboying. TC is an exceptional fighter. 
right? But he has a fucking lie to prove how great he is. I rest my case. All right, Trills. Mm. Uh, but I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Let y'all know. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry about my rant, man. But I just had to get it off my chest. Bro, bro, it is what it is. Oh, I you, Trill. <clears throat> that was spot on. I was like, damn, yo, Trill, Trill, with his lawyer self, he activated his inner lawyer. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> I, I was, just think, yo, I'm you brought up hard. one point that was phenomenal, and like people fanboy so much, it forces you to tell them the truth to the point it makes it seem like you don't like someone, and it's not that you don't like them. But you just keeping it real, and people, and then people get like upset about it. And I think that's the brilliant part. Like that was that's amazing because that's like one hundred percent. People don't want people don't want real no more. This is the era we live in. People don't want real no more. They want to believe what they want to believe, and that's fine. But when somebody pulls up facts, you can't get mad at that. You know, you can like who you want to like. But facts are facts. Truth is true. Be real with you. And for the record, Trill's actually talking about Kenny Porter when he said he hates them suits. (laughs) 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 I hate Kenny's hats. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, listen, I yo, I hate to seem like the contrarian in the group. Cause I actually agree 1000% with Trill. It's a lose lose for Terrence, but I'm gonna try to make an argument for what he could say, right? Well, first, I'll let me piggyback off of what Trill said. If he really wanted to make it beneficial, he should have took the fight at 154. Because I think, although you know, Kel OK Brook isn't special K anymore. What you could kind of say is, well, at least at 154, he won't be drained. And he's around the same size as Earl Spence. So then we can see how he will size up against, like, someone that way you could be like, all right, we can respect this opponent, right? But because he's doing that 147, people are like, bro, we already know what time it is. He's going to drain this dude. He's already broken. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not the same Cal Brook. But my argument, if I was TC's PR team, I would say, well, he needed a tune-up because of quarantine. And so he got the, the, the most known tune-up he could find, Kel Brook. Boom. So then that way, people can at least respect what he's, you know what I mean? Like, All right, we can respect yeah. that. It's a tune-up. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a known tune-up. We can respect that. You know what I mean? Hey, bro, Earl, G, that Earl made me sound G. died in a car crash a year ago, and he, his first fight back is Danny Garcia. No, and no. This is the same guy cool. they're saying is ducking Terrence. Nah, I, yeah, listen. And I don't man, mean to cut you off, G. Tune up. And I don't mean to cut you off, G, but since he's been at 147, look at his resume. Nah, it's I, I, all I, he's been having is tune-up. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. At least what I'm saying is, like, his argument could be, you know, I just need a tune-up in preparation for Earl Spence. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, you know, it's quarantine. Dude has been in the gym like they're supposed to be. You know what I mean? It's like one of those, like, all right, we can respect that. You know what I mean? Like, he's like, hey, I wanted to just fight a no-name just to be active, but I know people wouldn't like that. So I was like, let me try to get Kel Brook. At least I know, like, yeah, he's a tune-up, but it'll be decent work as a tune-up. And I think people could be like, all right, yo, we respect it, whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, we, it's, in that way, it's not like we're bashing them. It's more like, all right, in quarantine, you know, you know, we got you, bro. We got you. We know you're going to win, but you're just doing it just to stay active. That's the only argument I could uh, figure out for uh, TC right now. That's yeah, it. Uh, I kind of agree with G on that point. Like, it's, he's he's just needs to tune up for all the time off. The article did say he didn't fight since last December. It's been over a year of inactivity. We don't know what he's been doing in the chat. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. But Earl wanna challenge himself. You know, TC giving himself excuses. TC seeming like one of Greg's favorite fighters out here, you know, in these days, making excuses for himself. And you know, but you know. 
I can't say much on the on the on, on this fight. It just seems TC is not like giving the people what they want. And at this point, like you know, after this fight, you know, if TC doesn't fight, give us Earl Spence, Pacquiao, or somebody on the other side of this block, we gonna have problems. <laughs> That's it. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, you know, we're gonna we're gonna address it. It's out there. Like he didn't make a fight with he didn't make a fight fight with Sean Porter. He didn't make a fight with Keep Keep Thurman. He didn't make a fight with Pacquiao. He didn't make a fight with um. Earl, did I say Earl Spence already? Earl hey, Spence. I just want to point out to everyone the argument that Terence Crawford hasn't fought since uh December twelfth or December two thousand nineteen. Earl Spence hasn't fought. Uh, since September 2019, so he hasn't fought since September 2019, and he's still taking on a tougher fight than the so called boogeyman Terrence Crawford. You go ahead. Nah, I'm done no after a car accident. No tune up. You know what Terrence Crawford might be saying? Let these guys beat on each other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be over here. Doing my Rocky Three, you know what I'm saying? Well, y'all be, you know, each other. I'm gonna be over here doing my Rocky Three. So by the time I get to y'all guys, maybe y'all be broken down. <laughs> be the greatest, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. All right, go ahead, Ned. No, nah, I'm done. I'm done. That was, that was, this is my take. Like, after this fight, if we don't get the fight we want, then TC. We keep saying that, bro. We keep saying that after this fight. After, no more excuses. After, no more excuses for me. That's how I was saying. Yo, look. All right, so you done. I'm, I'm, I'm stepping in. I'm stepping. She's my witness. Tell me when I stop. Tell, stop me when I tell a lie, G. We were watching the fight. Keith Thurman was the number one walkerweight at the time. He had the belts. He was the guy everyone was saying was the man. And we had a, we were watching the fight with my boy Dilson. And my boy Dilson was just gassing Keith Thurman up like he was mm-hmm. untouchable, unbeatable, right? G, am I lying? No, you ain't lying yet. And yeah. what did I say? I said there are two guys that would beat him. Mm-hmm. Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford. Yeah. Were they popular at the time, G? Nope. Did anyone even know? He didn't even know who I was talking about, right? Mm-hmm. I had Remember, I had to pull up highlights of Earl Spence and, exactly. and Terrence Crawford to show him. Nobody was even calling Terrence Crawford TC at the time. You know how you know people just get popular? Like, for example... Uh, I was watching a uh, Def Comedy Jam uh, last night. It was I was I was laughing. At, um, Simone, uh, Simone, I think her name is. Uh, she was saying how like you know these rappers get all these video girls in, in their videos or whatever. Show me your first baby mama, <laughs> right? Show me what you was working with before you got famous, right? And so like my reason why I'm bringing that up is before Terrence Crawford had all this hype and all this fanfare. I acknowledged him as a great fighter. I believe he would beat Keith Thurman. Then, I believe it now. But I don't excuse the fact that he didn't make the fight with Keith Thurman. That's not what I do. I don't say because I think he can beat Keith Thurman, that means he can beat Keith Thurman. You got to prove it in the ring because I'm not 100% right. I don't give victories for anyone unless they earn it in the ring. People love it when I hold Deontay Wilder to that standard. But now that I hold TC to that standard, it's a problem. No, you could have renegotiated the fight with Keith Thurman. You could have worked out a fight with Keith Thurman. That would have been a better fight than Kell Brook. That would have been a fight people would have wanted to see. But that fight didn't happen. And so people say, hey, I predicted this. A long time ago. G's my witness. Am my lying, G? I think that you didn't say what you were going to say. No, I predicted that Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford were the oh, best, too. Yeah, 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 I give you that. Yeah, yeah, facts. That was when Thurman was number one. G's my witness to that. So how is it now when I'm calling out what I see, I'm a hater? Because Trill brought it up. Because I'm starting to see so much fanboying and, and, and riding that it's, it's annoying me. Yo, I like these guys as much as the next, but I'm going to call them out. Trill brought up a great point. Sean Porter. We didn't think Sean Porter stood a chance. Yo, look at our predictions for Sean Porter versus Earl Spence. Yo, the video was literally like one minute, bro. It was like one minute. 
That's how yo you've never seen us make a video so short in our in our life. We've never made a video so short. That's how sure we were that Earl Spence was gonna walk through Sean. But Sean showed some in that fight. And then look at all of us when we came back. We were right, but we gave Porter his props because that's what it's all about. It's just about being real, not about being fans. You when I look at Terrence Crawford at 147, I see the Deontay Wilder blueprint being implemented by Bob Aaron. For real, I see the Deontay Wilder blueprint. Keep fighting stiffs and act like everyone's ducking you. So he fought Jeff Horn. People's argument was, oh, he beat Manny Pacquiao. But did he? Because that was a controversial fight. There are people who believe Manny Pacquiao won. Jeff Horn got the belt. I'm not going to argue with decisions, whatever. He may have beaten Manny Pacquiao, but what people will leave out was Pacquiao wasn't with Freddie Roach when he fought uh, Jeff Horn. Was a boo boy was training uh, Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, Blue Boy was training me. That's how serious Manny took that fight. For those of you who think it's a game. So, okay, Jeff Horn gets the dub over Manny Pacquiao, right? And then Terrence Crawford beats him, and then everyone's going to be like, oh, well he, well, he beat Manny Pacquiao. Okay, cool. Let me see Terrence Crawford beat Manny Pacquiao. Then I'll be impressed. Amir Khan. We've already gone over this. Seriously, Amir Khan beating Amir Khan? Everyone's done it, and they all did it better than Terrence Crawford. Jose Benavides. My guy. Wasn't – he didn't ever prove he was elite. You know, like the article said, it was a guy on top rank. They could throw him in the ring with. Benavides was re just recovering. Benavides hasn't fought since that fight. <laughs> he, he's chilling. He's chilling. <laughs> Benavides hasn't fought since that fight. So he, he wasn't planning on fighting that fight exactly. until they were like, he That's got a, a bag for you. He, he, said, he said, cash at me my money. I am done with boxing. <laughs> and now let's go to Cavalosquez. We're just going to act like Cavalosquez didn't drop the so-called best fighter in the world. We're going to act like Cavalosquez didn't do that. We really going we really going to see and say that. We're going to act like Gamboa wasn't out boxing TC most of that fight. Little Gamboa who moved up in weight and then ended up going back down in weight. We're going to act like he didn't outbox TC. We're going to act like he wasn't up on the scorecards. We're going to act like that. This is what I'm talking about. That, that, that frustrates me with people. Who's better, Gamboa or Mikey Garcia? Don't even fix your face to tell me a lie. And you see what Earl Spence did to Mikey Garcia. Come on, man. Like, yo, this is being real and being real. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I can't give credit if you don't step in the ring. Well, people say, oh, who was Danny beat at 147? I can tell you who he's fought at 147. How about that? Let's talk about who he stepped in the ring with. Stepped in the ring with uh, Keith Thurman. Remember, he stepped in the ring with Keith Thurman first. He stepped in with the best Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia did. And Danny Garcia beat Keith Thurman so bad, he was never the same. After that fight. That's what y'all don't realize. Watch Keith Thurman that fought Danny and watch the Keith Thurman. The Keith Thurman after Danny was getting hurt by Jose Cito. That, that body's the, never going to be the same. That's the, that's the thing about Danny. We always said that about Danny. Danny is, 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 is this. Anybody who's fight Danny has never been the same the next fight. Anybody. Go watch them. Sean, after fighting Danny, go look at his next fights. Against Ugas and 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 um, Granados, look at Thurman's. These guys are hurt. These guys get really beat up in these fights. You know, um, sometimes it'd be like, okay, they they might have they might have uh, won uh, they won the battle, but they lost the war because these guys is looking like after they fight them. But then I just wanted to no nah, facts. So here's the deal. You also want to hop on a narrative that people are ducking Terrence Crawford, but this is what don't make sense to me. When Special K was special, Sean Porter fought him and lost a close fight. But there are people who believe Sean Porter won that fight too now. Sean Porter didn't just get out of class. Sean Porter lost, but Sean Porter was in it. Sean Porter fought Special K when he was special. Earl Spence fought Special K when he was special. And TC's just getting them now. And people just going to overlook that? When I point out how Deontay Wilder is the king of the leftovers, you guys get giggly. You get so giggly when I point out how Deontay Wilder is the king of the leftovers. Good point, baby. That's a good point right there, son. Hmm. Right? 
They what, use that same energy for TC. <laughs> he done fought a man Khan, been knocked out in multiple prior fights. That's he right. fought Kell Brook, been knocked out in multiple prior fights. But it's mm. okay for, for TC to be the king of the leftovers. Mm. When I point out how Deontay Wilder gets credit for fighting people he's never beat. Oh, I try to make the fight with Josh, what Josh would not want to fight. When we when we dive into it and we prove we disprove that, when we prove how Wilder never took on the best opponents and he claims everyone's ducking him, everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah, get him, get him. As soon as we do the same for TC, the energy's different. Mm. There's no difference. And just like Tyson, just like Deontay Wilder cherry picked Tyson Fury because he thought Tyson Fury was finished, had to lose all that weight, had to do all this stuff, and it ended up being a bad cherry. I hope Special K is still special. <laughs> I hope Special K is still special. It don't mean that I think TC's a bum. It don't mean I don't think he can fight because I think TC is a good fighter. I think TC's a great fighter. I think he's an even better man. I love what I see with him and his kids. This ain't nothing to do with me and TC. This is about people elevating him to a status he hasn't earned based on his performance in the ring. The same with Deontay Wilder. And if Special K is still special, then we'll get some answers. Then we'll see what's up. And some of y'all... We'll be suffering the same reality Deontay Wilder fans suffered because a prime special K whoops TC's ass. I'm telling you that right now. I'm telling you that right now. The special K before he fought um, Triple G, the special K that whooped Sean Porter. And y'all name one opponent TC beat that Denny wouldn't beat. Name one opponent TC beat that Earl Spence wouldn't beat. Name one opponent TC beat that Sean Porter wouldn't beat. Because I can name to you guys that Danny fought. I'm not so sure Sean, that TC would beat him. Maybe he could. Maybe he won't. And lastly, TC was undisputed in 140. I'll give him that. But the lineal champ wasn't there. The lineal champ was Danny Garcia. He had moved up. TC didn't move up to 140 till Danny was gone. Why didn't he move up to challenge Danny? Why? He's so easy. He's so terrible. He's so sloppy. Fury says he's a lineal champ, and I know some of you same people who hug on TC said he's not the lineal champion because Lennox Lewis retired. So how can TC be undisputed and be all that when the lineal champ was Danny Garcia and he was at 147 when Danny Garcia took over the one, I mean, when uh, Crawford took over the 147 pound division. See, this is what I'm talking about. Keep that same energy. See, I'm not the one who doesn't consider Tyson Fury lineal. Someone has to be lineal. What I just want are all the belts to align so we can have that guy, so we can know who that guy is. We need the same thing in the Walter Wake division because when Floyd Mayweather left, we don't know who's that guy. We need a pay-per-view star. The way we get that pay-per-view star is that all the guys from 147 fight each other until there's one. And then we'll have the mega star again. But as long as y'all keep excusing people for not making the fights, as long as y'all keep buying those stories, oh, people are ducking him. Deontay Wilder all over again. Terrence Crawford, Deontay Wilder, the same guy to me. And Terrence Crawford at 147, same as Deontay Wilder. Except y'all love it when I highlight how he's the king of the leftovers. But once, once, you, once you point out how TC's the king of the leftovers, people got a problem. Look at the resume. Look at the facts. You don't like it, you get big mad. That's your problem, that you're emotionally invested in it so much. Danny Green missed the shot. His wife getting death threats. <laughs> <laughs> over a basketball game, man. I point out some facts over boxing and y'all in y'all feelings. In your feelings. But the truth is the truth. And that's Earl Spence. And maybe TC, you don't want that fight because you know deep down inside, you can't handle the truth. Let us know what you think. Check us out in the comment section. Let us know what you think. So check us out on Instagram and Twitter. Also check out our podcast on all major streaming services. I smell an audit coming in. It's the boss. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, actually, we might do it live. Yo, let us know in the comment section. We will do it live. We will do TC live. Let us know what's up. We'll do TC live if you want us to. Let us know in the comment section. It's boxing, bro. Catch me creeping down the dark street. This is where it means the zombies meet. Guarantee we all gonna eat. A zombie ray again with HD. I'm a zombie in the night, you better run from me. Zombie ray in the house, you better run, homie. Brought a mask and some gloves with some thugs with me. I came to do damage, you wanna purge with me. Super Saiyan zombie, I'll be